Hi everyone, Emma here. I am getting ready to um, show you how to make a um, four times wrap bracelet. And this is a simple one. We're not going to use a bunch of different size beads. We're going to use the same size beads. That'll make it a lot simpler. And we're just going to do one pattern straight across. Um, the idea of a wrap bracelet is that you have different colors for each wrap to create a design. But I thought I'd try something different. I'm going to use these colors, these kind of uh, summery retro 70s colors together. But what I'm going to do is um, it's going to be a uh, like three beads across so that that they're going to be in the same position every time. So you're going to get this line across with the leather. You'll see when we get started if I didn't explain it correctly. So what you're going to need is um, some colored seed beads and these are size eights. And I got these from Kelly's Bead Boutique here in Canada, and they're super cheap, like $1.80, $1.50, dollars and these are Canadian prices, and uh, she has great uh, um, shipping, and it's free after a $100 order, and um, the shipping for the U.S. is inexpensive as well, so it's definitely worth it. So you need some colored beads. Um, you're going to need um, a button. This I got from a uh, seller on uh, Etsy. Um, you can watch some of my other product videos. I go into detail about the buttons and I apologize. I did a, a button unboxing and I was using a different camera. It was really um, uh, blurry so I'm going to redo um, my button collection with information on where you can buy the specific buttons. So any type of button is will work for this bracelet. Um, you're going to need some good uh, colored thread that matches your leather. Um, and I use this Coates and Clark a pulse three thread. It's a hundred percent nylon. It will not break. Super cheap, 150 meters or 150 yards for um, I think they're about four dollars for this, and this lasts a long time. And look at the beads. Um, so your leather. So I have some really beautiful uh, sky blue leather, and for for wraps, what you do is you measure your wrist size and then a little bit on top of that. And you have to double it because you need two strands to put your beads in between. And because we're doing barrel knots, you also need, I'm just looking, there's a bunch of little dirt or something. Um, yeah, the barrel knots take a bit of leather as well. So I always add um, an extra foot for it. So this ends up being, I measured it. So I've got it at my midpoint. So we'll just double it what we get. So there's one, two, three. So you need six feet of this. And you find I also have this tube to do the barrel knot and this I got from Kelly's Bee Boutique for 40 cents and I love it it's amazing I also use these beading needles they're a size 10 beading needle and this is the only one that I can find that the eye is big enough to fit this thread because this thread is a bit rigid so it's hard to weave into the some of the like I have a size 10 beading needle that's a gold eye and this won't fit in it. And I also have some wax to treat my thread and that's really important because it takes the the spin out of the, uh, the twisting out of the thread so that it doesn't get all tangled when you're pulling it through. I also have a piece of um, 
waxed cord that I've folded in half and tied a knot at the end and we are going to use this to attach it to our board and you can use anything for a board this is just a lid to a box and I put a bead mat and attached it with some sticky stuff and um, yeah, I used to use cookie sheets, brand new cookie sheets that I got at the dollar store, the little little ones, and uh, or you can use your beading tray, of course. So let's start with doing the barrel knot. So we're going to go ahead and thread our button. Sometimes the shank and the, the buttonhole isn't big enough to pass your leather through, and this is two millimeter leather. Um, I use a bead reamer, this thing here, and you could get for like ten dollars at the any uh, craft store or online, um, and you, you just ream out the hole a little bigger so you're gonna take you've got your midpoint and actually what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it out a little bit so that this top piece has a little more because we're gonna use this for the wrap so that that way when you're done you will be um, your leather lengths will be even and I apologize if this is hard to see let me enlarge this for this process and I'll do my best to get my fingers out of the way so you're going to place your tube alongside your two pieces of cord you're going to take your top piece you're going to bring it around and how many times you go around is up to you I usually do three so there's two and three and you're going to take the end of that piece. Now switch fingers so you're going to make sure you hold on to that so it doesn't get loose. And you're going to thread your the end of your leather through and I don't know if you can see that it's coming through the other end. So you pull that through And everything here. All the way through. And you're gonna, um, you can push the tube through as well and pull everything through. Take your tube off. Switch fingers. if I can do it so you can see what I'm doing. Now I want my knot to go down here so I'm gonna wiggle it down Let's see and it's tightening as it goes which is fine we want it tight anyway so now I you could tighten it all the way to the shank I like to have it so the button can sit sideways so when you're wearing it it looks like this something like that but totally up to you okay now you're going to take that opposite uh, that same cord and you're going to pull tight and kind of squeeze your fingers as you're pulling and recheck that's where you want it and actually that's that's not going anywhere and you can always adjust the other cord will shorten that and position your button and I like to squeeze the loops together and that's it you're done for your barrel knot to start your bracelet so now we're going to attach this to our board and let me go out here so you can see what I'm doing. So 
we are going to take our cord and we're going to take this looped part and we're going to thread it through the, the loop here. And I mean, you can do this however it works for you. This is just how I found it worked really well. So I've got the loop here and I'm going to put it around my button. So now I don't have to create a knot. And let's pull it tight. So that is ready to be attached on that end. Now what you want to do further down here is you're going to create a loose knot. Depending on where you want to go, you can like do it, you know, down to about here um, and then take it out as you go, or you can do it all the way to the end and then weave it. But for now, we'll just put it down here. Make sure your cords are side by side in the right position when you do that. So just a loop like this and not, no more than that tightness because you don't want your leather to get all bent and okay so hopefully we can show you this so that you can see it so you're just basically you're going to take this cord you're going to put it underneath your board reposition your leather so that the leather lies flat and you're going to weave the end into the two pieces now hang on to this piece and you're going to pull that tight and i'll show you the back side so you know what i'm doing here so see what i've done so there's the loose knot and I pull this tight and reasonably tight but not too tight and then you're just going to put a knot in here to hold it in place and that's yeah, too loose I think. I want it a little tighter makes it easier to do the there that's it now the stuff is going to just sit underneath here until you're ready to get further down in your bracelet then you'll take that out and you'll readjust as needed and what this does too is um, you can move this up or down so you're not reaching over your board to work on it so just make sure these cords are in the right position there and I'm gonna open that up a bit and we're going to attach our thread so we can get started so i've already gone ahead and um, attached my thread what I'm going to do to show you is this beeswax. Um, you can buy like a little disc of, I think it's paraffin wax. Um, it's probably better to use beeswax. But either way, whatever you have on hand works. It's just to get that, like, you can see how these are all looped from being on the spool. You want to kind of straighten that out because as you weave through the beads, it will get tangled and it's upsetting <laughs> to say the least so you just run it through and I have a long strand here I as I do these all the time I'm used to using a long strand um, I suggest when you start out to use smaller strands so this is two arms widths and uh, I would probably go with one. See, it's already tangled. There. Okay. And I will show you how to weave your thread, like to start a new strand, so that you don't have any knots. 
and that is huge that just makes a big difference in your bracelet my first bracelets about 10 years ago had all kinds of knots in it and it's I mean I love them I still wear them but it's nice to not have to put all these knots so let's get started I'll, I'll bring you in closer for this part so take your end and put it through the left um, piece of leather and I would leave a fair amount on the end maybe eight finger widths then you're gonna create a loose loose but snug knot and if you pull too tight depending on your leather you might actually scratch and damage the leather and the idea is you want that knot when we're done we're going to thread it back through the beads to hide it this is like one of the few knots you're going to put probably the only knot you're going to put in your bracelet so you want to hide it and making it slightly loose it'll pop into that bead that's right next to it so i would do a second knot and that's it and you can take this thread and kind of wrap it around the button so that it sticks up there so it stays away from your work and doesn't get all tangled so now we're going to look at these beads i'm going to get started a little bit and then it's really unfortunate there's a maybe the thread will cover it okay so i'm going to put some beads out and i'm going to get started a little bit and I'm going to pause the video to go through and then show you the next step so we're going to get started with these are so beautiful let me see what they're called so these containers matte crystal AB um, they're eight um, eight O's I think I might have said eight millimeter earlier that's not the case that they're eight O's um, eighty, and I think these are 8 gram tubes from Kelly's Bead Boutique and then I think we're going to use go green and this one was $1.50 and it's an 8.0 and it's matte transparent chartreuse Then we have matte translucent aqua and this one was $2 um, it also has a AB finish on it it's really cool it's kind of like a purpley white okay so to start out we use one bead because you see how the the cords are close together so you're just going to add one bead then you're going to go to two then to three so I think what we'll do is we'll start with all white and then add so you just string it go through all your cord trying not to tangle and then I just open up my leather a bit you're gonna press your bead down so you're going to go over your right hand leather and under and through the bead and you're going to come out under the left hand cord pull your cord through watching that it doesn't tangle and you see how this is getting in the way let me see if I can fix that And you're going to push the thread up a bit and pull it there. And now you're going to pick up two beads. 
and string it on. I think I've got this tangled. Oh. Okay, we need to get rid of this thing. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask. Sometimes, because I do it so often, I forget and don't explain things properly. Okay, so you're going to try and hold those two beads down because you're going to want to put your thread through. So you're going to go over your right hand leather, then under and through the beads, both of them, and under the other. So I hold the um, the thread to the leather as well as my beads as I pull through. It keeps it in position and uh, I mean you can reposition after as well but this just makes it a lot easier and neater looking and that That's that. So now we're going to go to three. Um, I think we're going to start our pattern now. So we're going to do one white, one green, one blue. These are going to look amazing. Okay, push them down over your right hand leather and through it's it's a little difficult at the beginning because you your leather is being stretched out to accommodate the three beads but once you get you know about four or five rows it starts to lay flat so then it's a lot easier so i also use my left uh, pointer finger to hold the beads in place as well. Make sure that's in focus. Okay, and we're going to go the next row white, green, and blue. So you're going to just use the same color pattern to create this kind of 70s look. We used to have um, like t-shirts and shorts and stuff like that with this color pattern. So funny when when we were kids, like it, I don't know, it, it wasn't that big a deal. We didn't really care as long as it was clean and nice looking. But I found some of the designs in the 70s a bit gaudy. <laughs> and the funny part is now those designs are back in. I just finished watching um, the second season of Hannah. And if you get a chance to watch it, it, it's a it's a violent movie or a series, so it's not for everybody. But um, it's about these uh, young women that were um, taken or given up uh, when they were born to be these uh, operatives, and uh, so they get all this training and stuff. So they, they finally are trying to introduce them back into the population and they're introducing like social media, um, social groups, things like that. And the if you really pay attention to their clothing and their jewelry, it's all 70s colors. And that's what inspired me to do this. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what... I had that necklace or I had that top or the one character wears uh, overalls with a kind of um, 
kind of a sporty baseball type shirt and so hilarious that's what I used to wear all the time when I was 13 so yeah. so yeah let me know what uh, things are back from your childhood that uh, that are interesting funny or that you loved and it's back again so, so you can see the pattern starting to develop so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do um, I'll probably do most of it and when I get to the end I'll uh, unpause the video and show you how to finish it off um, yeah so I'll be right back quick little update right here I just wanted to mention there are a couple of ways to weave your thread and your beads onto um, wrap bracelets um, so the way that I do it is you go through the top of the left with your beads over the right leather and then under through the beads and back and when you come back around to take your beads over top um, it creates let me see if I can enlarge this a bit so it creates this angled piece of thread down the one side but if you look at the other side because you're just going across the leather and over it's straight so some people don't like that look I, I actually like it and I like the ease of using one needle and just going through continuously what some people do and there's a specific technique um, I've never used it I I can show you how to do it if people are interested or point to some videos where somebody has done it but what they do is one you don't need a knot so you take your the middle of your thread and you lay it across and then you come across the two threads cross over each other through the beads and then you go through that way all the way down so that's a different technique but what that does is it gives you these straight lines all the way down on both sides so I just thought I'd mention that and I'll keep going and I'll be back so talking about uh, 70 styles I had to <laughs> show you this picture this is my sister Sylvia and myself with these lovely ponchos on and actually now that I look at it I didn't realize hers looks like granny squares the funny thing about this these uh, ponchos she um, sent me this picture for my birthday because I had forgotten all about them and um, she had a lady uh, cro or I guess it's yeah crocheted a blue one for me for my birthday <laughs> so funny and uh, the story behind this too is my sister and I were close to the same age and we come from a large family of nine kids so you can imagine clothing shopping for my mom was not fun like it is today with all the fun clothes for kids so uh, it was more of okay well if this fits and looks good and is a good price we'll get two one for you and one for your sister <laughs> that kind of deal right and what she would do so we knew which one belonged to who is she would get a different color so of course the colors were not uh, the best and they didn't have like a whole lot of selection so it usually ended up being blue was always available and then a brown or a yellow or something like that and being sneaky like I am I would always call dibs on the blue one <laughs> so my poor sister wearing this lovely yellow and brown poncho with the lovely pom-poms she usually ended up with the you know crappy brown article of clothing yeah, I'm a really good sister. 
<laughs> I love you, Sylvia. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you this funny picture. I'm back and I have approximately six and a half inches on this strand. Initially, I was going to do the full bracelet um, in this pattern, but I started thinking about it and it, you know, repeating the pattern stacked, I don't know, seems a bit boring. So I went ahead and picked two color beads that I thought would match the color scheme. These are fire polished six millimeter faceted stones and I buy these from Kelly's Bead Boutique and her prices are excellent. This was $2.75 Canadian and she has probably more than a hundred different colors and finishes of these so that's where I get my stock of these. So I'm going to go ahead and start and I'm going to show you how to start a different color bead or a different size bead. So I am going to bring, pull my leather up so you can see and it's easier to work. So you continue with your same cord and it makes it easier if your bead size matches what your Let's put it on the needle so you can see. Matches what you're already using. So you can see three seed beads actually fits perfectly with a six millimeter. So the transition's really smooth. If it was bigger or smaller, the leather in the first uh, bead would move up or down. So, so you string your bead and I. Uh, pinch it with my finger to hold it in place. You go over your right hand cord, leather cord, under and then through the bead. And I always pull this to make sure it's in the right position and then pull it through. And it's that easy and actually that is going to look really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with these white beads and a strand of bead of this size and style usually comes in 25s so it actually ends up working out to about six and a half um, inches and that is the size of my wrist so normally you go a bit bigger um, but with the leather wrap bracelet um, it seems to work out and if you're missing anything at the end you can always add to the end to make it longer but, and this goes a lot faster <laughs> as you can see it's very uh, it's very satisfying how fast it goes one of these bracelets usually takes me about two hours to make I find with all these little fiddly seeds it takes a lot longer but um, you definitely get a rhythm going I'm going to put these out here a little faster. And we're going to end up having to add some cord for sure. So, so let me know if you can see this well enough to um, to uh, thread the beads and I say that because some of my workshops it's it's really interesting um, something that may seem simple to one person is not to another and it doesn't mean you're smarter or not smarter um, it's just we all learn a different way and um, if you can't conceptualize it sometimes it's difficult to actually translate that into your hand movements so the, the funny thing is when I do workshops usually about half the people totally get it and don't need any help and then the other half um, struggle with this way of weaving so please let me know and if um, 
if people are interested and need help, I can um, do a video with like large uh, kids beads, you know, like a really chunky bead so that you can, and, and bigger cords so you can get an idea of where everything's going. So yeah, this is going to look really cool. So I'll go ahead and finish this one and I will get started on the green as well and come back for the finishing. Okay, I'm back. I'm getting ready to change my thread because this one ended. So I leave that tail and you'll notice, especially with these bigger beads, it's a bit loose. So just be aware of that when you start to re-thread. And what I do to secure it is I go up three beads. So uh, right here and down. So what I'm going to do is I always start from the left. That's just my preference. And what I do is I put the start on the underside of the third bead so I go through it and come out that side pull your thread through and you're going to leave a tail on this end and not a big tail maybe a couple of inches like this so just leave that and what we're going to do at the end when we finish the bracelet we're going to go ahead and we're going to put glue in those areas and then clip the tails so i just weave the same way you would normally the one thing you should be aware is that like i said that bead is loose so it's going to want to um, um, to move so just grab a hold of the tail and hang on don't pull too t tight because your other uh, tail is going to come undone so under through and okay so this one you can see here um, let me see if I can Enlarge that for you. I don't know if you can see that. You see how it's already getting loose? So just pull that tail so that it's tight and you want it, your bead lined up straight as well. So you're going to hang on to that tail because when you put your thread through, it's going to want to go with it. So let's get the needle in there and then grab a hold of that and that's all you have to do is pull it like that and I pull it under the thread just like that and then under And watch you don't tangle that thread in. And you can straighten it out a bit. And that is that easy. And like you can't even really tell. Like we've got this up really close so you can see there's two strands there. But when you're wearing this, you'll never see there's two strands. And that looks a lot better than having a knot showing. And when I was doing this before and I would put knots and the knots would get jammed in the holes and then I couldn't put the thread through and it's just a not fun anymore so there so I'm going to continue with these oh and I also pulled out I realized this is a four wrap and I only had three wraps so I pulled out some really delicious colors and I want your opinion. Maybe see, guess what, uh, um, what color I end up picking. 
So I have these awesome colors. Let me just make sure we like this. That I got from the Northern Bead Company in Canada. So these here are opaque iris turquoise and they have like a beautiful luster on them. So that might go with that. Then I have metallic light teal. These are so amazing. Really beautiful. Uh, you know what? I may have to just close my eyes and pick one. This one is called metallic matte metallic turquoise. Just and these were um, three dollars and forty-five cents for fifty gram bags. So that is like a crazy super deal, and that's Canadian. And this one is opaque aqua iris. This one kind of matches the uh, the cord, so that might be. Let's look at our seed beads. So we have that. So those colors. Yeah, that might be. I might put that one aside and think about it. And then, last but not least, we have metallic blue. And look at this. This is so gorgeous. But it's kind of out of context of these colors. These 70s colors. Yeah, that's a little too bright. I think we'll take that one out. Look at this one. This one here, the uh, matte metallic turquoise, looks a lot like this seed bead. I mean, it's getting close to the same color. So it might be good to try that. This one here matches the leather cord, so it might kind of disappear in the cord. So. And then, of course, oh my gosh, these turquoise are so beautiful. It's hard to pick. But you know what? That may be for another bracelet. So I'll be back. I'm back, and I ended up picking the matte metallic turquoise to kind of match with these seed beads. So it looks pretty good. I just wanted to show you how I end because we're going to put a barrel knot. Let's open this up. Um, because we're going to put a barrel knot, what's going to happen is your um, leather cord is going to squeeze together. So you want to put something there so that it keeps the shape of your bracelet. So I go from and, and what I did was I put two seed beads side by side and because these are bigger than those these beads um, they uh, I only needed two to get that width so to end I end with one bead and what I do is I am gonna do like I normally do with the one bead but when I come out here I am going to come out the back and is that right? No, I'm going to come out through the top. Sorry. I'm I'm just going to show you. So hold. I'm going to grab my bead with my nail, go through the back, and instead of going under I am going to go up and I'll tell you in a second here. So let's just get this going. And I'm going to pull it tight. And the reason I did that is because now I want it to the thread to follow the same path that the other thread did. So to do that, I had to come up through the top and 
the thread is getting loose so now we're going to go under so we're going to thread back up that's what we're doing so we're going to go under the other beads now let's pull this tight and this will tighten up as we go so just hang on to it pull it tight and now we're going to go through the top here there Not tight now this is going to go under have to switch hands here and through the top of the or the bottom of the next row and you're going to do that a few times and you're basically just threading your loose cord through and I do I usually thread a little more than just three rows when it's the beginning and the end of your bracelet and that's because these areas get a lot more wear and movement so if there's a loose thread that's where it's going to come undone so we want to prevent that so through the top of these two and then we're going to go under the next row and you can adjust your beads by just pushing them up or down and I think I'm twisted around my hand Ugh. there I think we're probably good now tight yeah I think that's good so leave a bit of a tail there and make sure you put your needle away if you have thread on it um, I probably won't need this thread so I'm going to take it off and I'm just pointing this out let me pointing this out because I have cats and I've heard more than one horror story of cats going after the thread and eating it and then ingesting the needle because they've you know they're they're not that smart <laughs> yeah and ended up having to have surgery so please be careful with your needles and I'm sure if you have children you are anyway Okay, so those are done. So we're going to untie our bracelet from the card. Let me bring this down so you can move this stuff out of the way. We're going to do some barrel knots to finish off our bracelet. And we're almost, almost done. So let me untie this. Got tangled. And just pop that off. Save that for another time or throw it out, doesn't matter. Okay, so here's your temporary knot. And you see how it it bent the um, leather. So I just take my fingers and smooth it out. So it's nice. Now I always add lots. Oh, let's measure it. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. So there's the first, the second. Turn this a bit. And so this is what it's going to look like on that side. So that turned out pretty good. Now, let's see if I can show you this side. So, had I normally I, I it's been a while since I've done a 
a four wrap and I forget that you have an extra length here so you might want to add an inch or two but we're going to go ahead and put a barrel knot here and then we're going to leave a larger closure and then a barrel knot there so it should fit your button Not too bad and you don't have to put barrel knots you can just do a, um, a you know just a straight up knot and that works well too if your leather is softer like this leather isn't the natural leather um, it has like a coating on it for the color and it makes it a little stiffer uh, it's still really good so then the knot will hold but uh, I like the barrel knots because they hold really well so super simple take your tube out position it line up your cords and I have one cord that's longer than the other so I'm going to use that for my first barrel knot so once around twice and three times around pinch it with the other hand bring your cord around thread it through your tube and you'll see it comes out and push your two through switch fingers and like move your knot where you want it so we want it close to the beads and so find that position that you like and then hold on and pull tight kind of squeezing those loops to help and there you go so I am gonna check my sizing again sure so I think I'm going to put it there I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it for this and I will adjust this later take it out and redo it add some more beads so now they're both even so it doesn't matter which one you take position your tube and once around twice around three times around and come under through your tube and switch fingers pull this through take your tube off and adjust your loops so I would never do a closure that big but because I messed up on my thing I'm going to take this out and redo it but you get the idea and then to end it um, if you're doing it for yourself, you can measure exactly where you want your closure. Um, for mine, because I sell them, I do multiple closures. So I would put another, and we might as well go ahead and do it because the second closure might actually fit better. Because um, that was a bit tight, so let's go ahead and do that. So one, two, three and feed it through the tube and you know doing more of these um, barrel knots helps you figure out what works for you where to put your fingers 
and stuff like that. So, and actually, I want my closure to be smaller. So I think what you can do is just kind of jiggle your loops like that and tighten there that should be good and now hold those and tighten hold and tighten and then you have these little uh, tails left and I would just maybe clip it to about here and you can if you want to leave it a bit longer you can add a bead and another little knot on each end like a tassel so let's see how that fits now So this is the big closure that I have to fix here. And I'm going to loosen this a bit. Pull these loose like that. And then, so what we could do is put a barrel knot there. And then clip it there. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And then as well, what we want to do is, okay, so those are fine. The first one here, the first thread, you're going to re-thread your needle onto this and you're going to go through the first bead and you can see where the knot is that knot is going to turn and go inside the bead and you won't see it and then you're going to continue to thread this piece through the same path of the other thread so that you can't really tell it's there for about three rows or as, as much as you can get your needle in through with this short tail and you're going to leave it long then you're going to come in with your GS hypo glue and it's got this awesome uh, tip so you can get it actually will go inside the beads so it's really cool and you're going to go all over the bracelet where you've got your threads and you're going to add a drop in there just like that that and make sure to put the cap back on and then clip your threads be careful clipping your threads because they're so close to these other um, threads that uh, you know you want to get it as close to the bead as possible but don't cut those I've done that before I was able to sell if it happens to you don't freak out like I did <laughs> just gently set it down get a needle with some thread on and start a couple of beads back and go through the whole thing for say five beads six beads and then it will it will secure that so you'll be fine and you put your glue in you'll never know that there was a cut in your thread yeah so then cut all these loose threads and you're ready you can add a, a charm if you want and that is it let's take a look let's see if we can hide these threads here there's the beautiful bracelet nice summer 70s style wrap bracelet if you have any questions, uh, please
please let me know and uh, if you have any ideas for different color designs or you want to see a specific technique let me know and uh, if you have any funny stories about your <laughs> childhood uh, funny clothing uh, yeah let me know thanks a lot bye